are talking all about no BS habits to kick cravings and start your last diet makeover ever. I know that from working with women and even myself, we run into the same issues over and over again. It's doing great, you know, you're eating the right foods, you're feeling motivated, and then all of a sudden, it's literally like you're pulled from within. You're compelled to eat these foods that aren't on your plan. You can't figure out why we can't just stick to the plan. What is so hard about this? Why are cravings so strong? I'm gonna give you some new strategies you might not have heard of today. They work really well for me, and they're not your traditional strategies. I find that, you know, if you're given the advice to just, oh, make this food because it tastes kind of like the thing you're craving, but not really, or, you know, just don't buy chips, don't buy them, don't bring them in the house. Well, that's great, but don't you want to be able to live in a way where you can have the chips in the house and not eat them? So that's what I want to teach you guys today. So we are going to be here for between an hour, an hour and 15. It just depends how much content I have to give you and how um, many examples I'm going to give you today. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do a brief little intro here, talk to you about what we're going to be going over today. Then we're going to be going back to the flip chart here where I'm going to be doing three no BS habits to kick your cravings. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to sit down and we're going to talk, answer some of your questions. And if at the end of this, this is all something that you're like, this is amazing. I want more. At the very end, I'm going to share with you what it might look like to keep working together in the future. But of course, that's all optional. And for the end, right now, it's just hundred percent content. So what I want you to focus on, I want you to be here and be present with me. So close out your Instagram, shut off Facebook, stop the emails from coming in, close the door. This is just me and you right now. This is your chance for one day before the new year. This is our chance to fresh slate, take notes, get engaged, be fully present so that we can start taking action. My job here is not just to fill you with fluffy ideas. It's to give you things that you can take and put into action today, tomorrow, for the rest of your next year. So let's get started with that. Make sure that you have full attention here. And as a thank you, if you stay all the way to the very end of this, uh, of this masterclass we're doing together, I've got something free for you that I did with my paid clients last November and it is a exclusive masterclass. It's totally free. You don't have to sign in or anything to get it. I will give you the link at the very end and it's a masterclass I did all about how to commit to your plan no matter what and talk about compelling reasons. So this is that whole navigation between, well, how do I do what I said I was going to do when I don't feel like doing it? So that's what I'm going to be teaching you there. It comes with a worksheet, a 25 minute training video. It has been super valuable in helping my clients stick to what they said they were going to do. I'm going to give you that to free for free if you stick around to the end. But I know you're probably sitting here and, you know, I don't know what time it is for you, but you're probably like, well, I don't know. Like, is, am I in the right place? And this is in the right place for me. So I want to give you a little bit of assurance that you are here in the right place. So I want you to know that this training today is for you. If you, if you're one of those people that like, you finally see the scale moving, you're down two pounds, five pounds, you're feeling great. And then all of a sudden, you know, you find yourself like fog eating into the weekend and you've just literally eaten everything in your sight. It doesn't feel like you have any control and you're going in circles. And perhaps this training is for you. If you like desperately just want something that's easy, you want to wake up and just be like, yes, this is easy. This is my lifestyle. I love it. And it's getting me results. So this training is for you is if you fall into that group too, and you're tired of falling off the wagon. This training is also for you is if you want to find a system that you're like, hey, I can stick to this. This is good. And you're like, oh my gosh, no wonder it was so hard before. So that if you're here for that, this is for you. And then lastly, if you're totally ready to lose the extra inches, kick your cravings and develop a system that's super easy. Well, I want you to know that you are in the right place. I am thrilled that you're here. So let's jump in. I want you to know right now that there are three reasons why you're struggling with your cravings and why you're struggling to lose your last 10 pounds. So I have been in the fitness industry doing personal training, nutrition coaching for the last 10 years. And I got to say the same themes come up over and over again. And that's why I know that this, this dealing with cravings is what we need to learn about. Okay. So reason number one is that we start these diets that we have no intention of staying on. I mean, how many of you guys have been like, I have six weeks to go to get to that wedding and I've got to drop 10 pounds. And you do these things that realistically after that six weeks is up, you have no intention of staying on. Like, am I right? Yes. If you've been on one of these, this might be the reason why you find you're struggling so much. The second reason why you might be struggling so much is that you feel out of control with your food cravings. So maybe you did take a plan that was realistic, but you just can't understand why Friday rolls around and all you want to do is eat pizza or all you want to do is snack on chips or have chocolate or a glass of wine. And it feels like you are almost eating against your will. 
I don't know if this is resonating with you, but this was one of the ones I had the biggest struggle with. And lastly, the reason number three, you start to doubt yourself. I mean, so many of us have tried something, had it not work, tried something, not had us work. And you start to be like, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the reason this is not working. What's wrong with it? Why does it seem to be working for her? I'm doing exactly what she's doing. So I want you to drop us in the comments right now. Do one of these three reasons resonate with you? Is it either that you start diets that you realistically know you're not gonna stick to? Is it that you feel crazy out of control with your cravings? Or is it that you start to doubt yourself? When you doubt yourself, you don't put in the same uh, like chutzpah and effort that you would if you were totally confident. So let's drop them in the comments below. Yeah, I'm seeing some people say number two, number three. Oh, number three again. Yeah. So we all have our own reasons for why we find it such a struggle. And these are the same three reasons that I hear over and over again. We're going to make sure that we address all of these today. I'm still seeing your guys' numbers come in. Number two, number two, number one. Yeah, I totally get you here. Um, so here's the first thing. I really want to talk to you about a bit of truth time, because if you're here, you might be looking to lose your last 10 pounds, your next 10 pounds, or your last 30 pounds, last 50 pounds. We're all at a different place in our journey. Um, but I wanted to be really transparent and make sure you know where I was coming from on this too, and that I can relate to the struggles you're with. And that's why, how I know that the strategies I'm going to share with you work, because the truth time is like, I know what it's like to be semi close to the end of your goal. Maybe you're 10, maybe you're 20 pounds away and you've been in you know, pretty good shape. Most of your clothes fit you pretty well. Um, and I always find that like, oh, I know what it feels like to be struggling to be like, well, I don't really look that bad. I could only lose a couple pounds, but I'll start again Monday because I'm not that far away from my goal. So I found that I started struggling with this, but the thing is I didn't want to be in pretty good shape. I wanted to be in phenomenal shape, but I was finding that, you know what, there was nothing really long with how I looked. I mean, when we're really being critical and, and us as women, we always tend to be a little hard on ourselves, but I was finding that I didn't just want to look great. I wanted to feel great too, but I found that all when I did was what I focused on that side of it, when I focused on what I want to look like, it was really hard to get motivated because I have a lot of anxiety in my life. That is the heavy purse that I get to carry that I like to call it. And I deal with a lot of that. I didn't like feeling bloated all the time. I didn't like feeling out of control with cravings and self-conscious when I was on the beach. So I found that by focusing on that, I found it was really hard to get motivated. So I found that maybe I need to address what is going on in the inside of me too. And so what I started to do was I started to make some changes. And what happened was I decided, you know what, maybe I should cut some calories and go on the treadmill because I mean, isn't that what we all think? We're like, we should probably do something extreme to get there. But then I had this aha moment. I was like, this isn't gonna work. I've done this before, it doesn't work. I always end up back in the same spot. The only way this is gonna work is if, I do something that I can wake up and look forward to doing every day because what gets you there, what gets you to your goal keeps you there. So I went from this to this in just under three months using the strategies I'm going to teach you today. And it was so excited. I started by really looking at what was going on up here and what I was putting on my plate, but I had one major problem. These cravings, Sure, you can put the right foods on your plate and sure you can, you know, get a realistic gym routine going on and go small. But if you can't control your cravings, I mean, I just couldn't stop myself from giving in. They would wreck everything. Like I would have a, an amazing week of progress and I would be excited and I would eat really clean. You're probably being like, yes, I've had that week before too. And then I would fall off the bandwagon on the weekend, throw it all out the door and really just feel like I wasn't making any progress. And it was just really frustrating. So I decided that what I needed was a step-by-step -step system to help me deal with the cravings. So I searched the internet, I went on Google, and I was like, how do I deal with my cravings? And the only answers I kept getting were things like, well, if you want a pizza, here's a fun little uh, mock pizza you can make. Or here is, what about just don't buy the pizza? You can do it, don't keep it in the house. But I wanted to be able to have a pizza sitting in the freezer and chips in the cupboard and not have the cravings. I wanted to be able to control that. And I'm looking around and nobody's doing that. So I decided this is when I'm gonna figure out how to kick my cravings because nobody's teaching how to literally get rid of them. We're just teaching nice ways to avoid them. So what I did was I made a decision and this is the photo right here that I took on the day I decided to change my body forever. I remember waking up that morning and I just felt so good. 
and so bloated and so blah, and I didn't even feel that good. So what I did was I took my, all my knowledge from my undergraduate in kinesiology, my personal training, my nutrition coaching, my years of work with clients, and what I decided to do was apply it. So I went from here to here in just under three months. But the secret is what I've realized is in order to get results, you need a system, right? You need something step-by-step -step that you can do in order. The other thing is that you need solid habits and that's where our no BS habits come in today. So two things that you need, you need to get a system, something to follow that is works for you and you need to have a system of habits. This is how you drop your last 10, last 10 pounds and keep it that way forever. That's why I love teaching this because it's so sustainable, it's life-changing and it works. So let's go over really quick what you're gonna learn today and then we're gonna jump over to our flip chart here. So the three no BS habits you're gonna learn. The first no BS habit is how to start your last diet makeover ever and create a system for life. Meaning when I say last diet makeover ever and that's why that's my whole thing is because when I teach my concept. My goal is to have you learn it, apply it, and be like, hey, this works. I'm never going back. The last diet makeover ever. This is not somewhere you show up, you put in the work, you drop the weight, and then you gain it all back. This is the last time we are doing this. So create a system for life. So this is the foundations. No BS habits is learn how to do stuff you can keep for life. Then we go on to no BS habits number two, which is how to eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full, the rest is drama. This is piece two. You need to understand that you're not overeating because even if you're eating all the wonderful food in the world, if you're going overboard, you're going to struggle with your cravings and you're going to struggle to fit in that pair of skinny jeans that you want to fit to or whatever is your goal is right now, look good on the beach, whatever it is. The last and final habit that we're going to get to is how to commit to your plan. So remember, this is that whole doing what you said you were going to do part and process through any craving no matter what. And this is the meat and potatoes here. This is that whole processing craving that I want you leaving here today going, oh my gosh, how did I not know that? So that's my goal for you today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over really quick onto, here we are, so you guys should be able to see me now, which is lovely. Okay, are you guys ready to learn my three no BS habits to kick cravings and start your last diet makeover? Ever give me a yes in the comments if you are in for that. I'm just gonna squish my chair out of the way. Okay, so I'm just going to move us back here a little bit. All right, so this is the point where I need you to have, I so I can see you guys here, yes, yes, yes. Awesome, so I want you guys to have pen and paper in hand right now. I want you to take a lot of notes because we are gonna have a section at the end after this to go over questions and answers because you'll probably have some questions on how you can make it specific to you and I'm gonna be here as long as you have questions to make sure those are answered for you. Okie dokie. So we know what we're doing here. Let's start here. So here's the thing. One of the things I really hate about the diet industry right now is it is full of fake promises. It is full of, this is easy, just follow this little plan that I did that works for my body that it's nothing to do with your body or the foods you like or the foods that cause your body to get upset. And there is this image in the diet industry right now that's painted that, you know, follow my easy path and it'll be simple and it'll be great and you're gonna have fun and everything's gonna be rainbows and what we don't understand what we you know it's funny we un intellectually understand it but we don't apply it is that losing weight is challenging because not only do you have to implement habits to do with everything you eat on a daily basis the exercise you do but you also have to take inventory of what's going on up here I mean the whole reason why we're giving into cravings and you know we can't stop eating and we're emotional about our food choices and we can't stay committed is because of what's going on up here and we don't even address that so we need to understand right now me and you need to be a very frank with each other losing weight is challenging but the fact that i'm telling you this is actually an advantage for you because if we go into this journey expecting it to be a smooth straight line we encounter our first diet mistake where we fall off our plan, where we overeat, where we go way past what we said we were gonna do, where we slip up. And we, instead of realizing that, oh, this is part of the journey where I learn, we beat ourselves up, we get angry, we tell ourselves we're a failure, why can't I do anything right? What's wrong with me? This is never gonna work with me, I'm special. Like, this is where we go. So by being able to understand that there are going to be roadblocks, we are gonna mess up. You can be so much more confident when you reach them, be like, ah, this is what Tanessa was talking about. These are those diet mistakes that are gonna happen. How can I learn from them? So we need to understand it's not a straight journey. 
Now here is the greatest part about weight loss, which I wanna tell you today. Weight loss, getting those last 10 pounds off, dealing with your cravings is a set of skills that we need to master. And we don't ever think of this whole journey as skills. We just think of it as something that we do short term. But we need to understand that in order to feel the way we wanna feel, have a healthy lifestyle, we have to learn two sets of habits and skills that are entirely different. We not only need to learn them, but we need to practice them daily and then develop them. So skill number one we need to learn is actually the tactical step-by-steps that it is going to take in order to get to your goal, whether that be a dress size you want to fit into, cravings you want to get over, a healthier lifestyle, more exercises. Those are the skills, all right? There's also a set of skills number two, which is eating to fuel your body. These are skills we need to learn and practice daily. Often what happens is we try to go and lose our weight or drop our inches or whatever it might be, but we don't eat to fuel our body. We just eat to do to get to the goal as fast as we can, but we need to be eating in a way that nourishes our body, that makes us feel amazing and alive and takes care of us so that we can live a long life at the same time as this happens. We normally scratch this one, only focus on what we need to do to get there, but then our bodies haven't been nourished, so we get to our goal, and we realize that we're, we're starving, we're miserable, so we start to eat, weight comes back. Like, can I get a yes in the comments if this has happened to us before? So my job here is to have you understand that this journey is a set of habits and skills that you need to learn, practice daily, and continue developing. This is gonna be a theme throughout our training today. Learn, practice, develop. Learn, practice, develop. All right, let's get on to our first no BS habit. So we want to learn, you know, how can we start a diet makeover and create something that we can do for life? Remember we said we needed a system and habits. Here's your habit. I'm going to share the system. So number one is we need to start by making small changes. So if you're looking at me right now going, well, yeah, of course, small changes. I hear that all the time, but that's not what we want because I talk to women all the time through my coaching programs and my training clients. Here's what we say. Let's just do something big right off the bat because I know that my results on the scale are going to make me feel motivated. Well, yeah, but if you can't maintain it, what's the point? Because all that weight's going to come back on. So this is based on a book that I love. It's called The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. It says that small changes repeated over time, big time results. So I want you to think if you swapped out your meal out at lunch for a salad, healthy alternative, every day and that's the only thing you did it might not feel two days later like you made big change a week later but a month six months and a year later these small changes start to add up especially when you start to add a small change master it and then add another small change this is how we start to get momentum going and create changes for life so what this doesn't look like in my experience is Slaving every day to scan all your foods, put them in a calorie counter. Oh, well, that put me 50 calories over. I wonder what else I could eat. Taking no regard whatsoever to how you feel your body. You're secretly, you're just trying to match a number. You're trying to get to 1,800 calories, 1,300 calories, or you're trying to reach your macro goals. Because here's the thing. This is me when I'm going to be 95 years old. If I don't see myself doing the strategy I'm implementing, when I'm 95, I'm not going to implement it. And you can darn well bet that when I'm 95, I'm not going to be entering my calories every day into my app. Because what's going to happen is the day that I get sick and tired of that, I'm going to be like, oh, I really don't know what I'm eating. Well, I'm, I'm, and then you just start to eat a little more and a little more and you backslide. Every habit you implement, you have to be able to maintain without that mental drama, the fight, it's just something you look forward to doing every day. In my opinion, if you focus on whole foods in the right amount at the right time, math has no place in weight loss. It should be about whole foods and making sure that your hormones are balanced and that you're fueling your body with the food you need. This is how you maintain an effortless body weight. So a good way to start implementing small changes, and these are your action steps, is you can start, like I said, by just doing one meal. So instead of doing at lunch, I always go out with my coworkers. Maybe just at lunch, you start to bring your food to work. You pack a healthy lunch and you bring it. And then when you've mastered that, maybe you move on to your breakfast or your dinner, one meal at a time. Or maybe you start with one food at a time. Maybe you are totally aware that pasta makes your stomach upset, but you eat it five days a week. So what about just inching back to two days a week? You know, small changes where you're like, that I could do, that I could master. Then when you get good at those two days a week, you can decide where you want to go from there. 
water. What about just adding in, if I normally drink four glasses of water today, what about going to six? Small changes and when you get successful add on and most important, you should be having fun. So part one of how to make a, last, uh, a long changing system for life, you need to start with small changes. The second thing you need to do, you need to be including whole foods that you like to eat. So when I'm looking at my plate, I like to ask, did humans make this food? Did nature make this food? Because the more processing, refining, additives, chemicals that are integrated into our foods, the more they throw your body out of whack. So specifically, there is a hormone that causes you to store body fat. It's called insulin. Its job is to put energy into your cells to store energy for you for later. But the thing is, that hormone goes way up the more refined processed foods we eat, the more human-made foods we eat. So if you're starting with small changes, you want to look at one meal maybe. The meal that you know would be the easiest to change. And I want you to look at it and be like, how could I make what is in my bowl and what is on my plate more nature-made, less human-made? Human-made are things like Twinkies, cookies, cakes, pastas, breads, anything that went through a refining process. Things that nature made are things like animal products and whole meats and eggs and vegetables and fruits and legumes and grains like quinoa and rice and potatoes. So these are things and we want to make sure we like to eat them. If you don't like salads and you just do not like them, I wouldn't say I'm going to eat salads all day every day. You might start with something like integrating some spinach into a healthy shake. Maybe you're trying out Buddha bowls. Or maybe you're even making vegetable soup and starting that way. So we want to start by looking at our meals one at a time and saying, did humans make what's on my plate or did nature? And we want to start shifting it towards things that nature made on our plate. They help balance hormones. They help promote healthy weight. And they just promote overall. They, there's such a giant decrease in risk of chronic disease. And not only that, inches around your waistline. So eat whole foods you like. Number three. Decisions ahead of time. This one is also key. So we're talking about creating a system for life. So we know we need to make small changes, right? We also know that we need to eat whole foods, whole foods being things that are more nature made. So decisions ahead of time. This means that I am taking three to five minutes out of my day to plan for what I'm gonna eat tomorrow. Here's what we like to do instead. We like to think, I've got this. I know what healthy foods are. I've got it all covered. My groceries are in the fridge. I'm going to wing it because I remember before when I did Weight Watchers two years ago and lost weight, even though I've gained it back, I winged it and it worked. Here's the thing. If the weight didn't stay off, it didn't work. Winging it leaves your brain in charge. And the thing is, we want to be able to make decisions ahead of time. The reason for this is if the night before I sit down and write what I'm going to eat for the next 24 hours, I have taken all impulsive choice out of the decision. When you are at noon tomorrow for your lunch and you had planned a salad and you really, everyone else is going out for lunch and you're starting to feel like, oh, I really want to go out for lunch too. This lets you go, hey, I already made this decision, case closed. I don't reopen the decision, this is just made. My decisions are planned ahead of time, 24 hours. Everything's written down. Because here's the thing, we have two areas of our brain. One of it is what existed back in caveman days and all that brain wants to do is seek pleasure, so feel good, avoid pain, don't feel bad, and make everything easy. All right, so when that moment comes for lunch, all you're gonna wanna do is say, eh, I'll go out and start again tomorrow. Or like when you're driving home and you have a healthy dinner planned and you're just like, mm, maybe I'll just make craft dinner because I had a hard day and my boss wasn't very nice. And there's so much work left to do on my plate. Perhaps you've been there before. So what you're doing is by writing everything you're going to eat down the night before at approximately what time, you don't let your brain, your primitive brain, make impulsive choices. You make them at a time where you are making decisions based on what you want long term not what you want right now. That is so important. You're making decisions based on what you want long-term, not what you want right now. In the moment, decisions are always what you want right now. 
So take that out of the equation, make them ahead of time. So if we're going to start creating a system for life and starting a last diet makeover, wherever, we need to start with small changes, moving towards a whole food plan and creating decisions ahead of time. Can I get a heck yes? If we are on board with starting those three things, we know exactly what to do, putting them in play. Does that make sense? I want you to type yes in the comments right now if that makes sense. So I know that you're engaged and you're here with me and we're making sure this content is hitting home because we like to think that all of this weight loss stuff is so fancy. It's not. It's, it's basics like this done consistently. Awesome. I can see you guys here. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Okay. So here is the learn, practice, develop. You just learned those three skills, right? I just taught those to you. Now it's your turn to go put them into play and practice them. You practice making small changes. You practice turning, moving towards whole foods. You practice decisions ahead of time by writing out your plan, no matter what, okay? Then we develop. If we only learn the skills and practice them, and then all of a sudden our, our, our choices didn't work, we might throw our hands up in the air and say, that diet didn't work. Well, here's the thing. All diets work to some degree with everyone. But what we like to do is say the whole thing didn't work. What I want you to start doing is developing your skills and being like, okay, well, that plan didn't 100% work, but what from it did work? What helped me out? What made me successful from that plan and what didn't work? Then what you do is instead of throwing your hands up in the air and saying nothing works for me, I want you to take what worked and keep doing that and add another small change. Leave behind what didn't work. This is how you develop it because here's the thing, no matter what anybody promises you, there is no way to know if your plan will work until you try it by practicing because your body, my body, everyone else on this call right now, our bodies are all different, our hormones are different, our starting positions are different, our age, perhaps our genders, perhaps our, our family history of disease. So it's crazy to think that some diet you download off Pinterest is gonna work for you like it did for the creator. That's why cookie cutter, cutter diets are complete garbage. They don't work. You don't have any of the skills. It's not based on you. We need to take, a, like, we need to take charge of this and start doing this for ourselves. So there's no way we're gonna know if it works until we practice. So we must practice. Here are the two questions you are gonna ask yourself to help you develop and progress your plan. So you make a small change, perhaps you incorporate a whole food and your decisions are made ahead of time. You ask yourself this, question number one, did I get results? Did I get results from the change I made? The answer is easy, it's either yes or it's no. If the answer is yes, great, keep it. If it's no, there's another question you have to ask yourself, did I apply myself 100%? Because I, I'm probably just like you, you're just like me. How many times have you applied something and then you mostly did it? And then you're like, yeah, that didn't work. Well, did you actually apply it? And if your answer is, well, no, I didn't do it 100%, start again. Try again, commit 100% so you know you're making the right decision. So you ask yourself, did I get results? Yes or no? Then you ask yourself, how did I feel? How do I feel about that? If you are like, yes, I got results, but I'm miserable doing it, this is not something that's gonna get you results and keep your results. So we need to make sure that we're getting results, yes, and how we're feeling, we're feeling great. I'm motivated, I like this. I don't need a nap at two o'clock every day. I don't crash, I'm not hungry all the time. I don't have my cravings. These are the feelings you want. So the answer should be, yes, that change got me results. Yes, I feel amazing. If it's not, just go back and practice a new skill. This is how we create plans that work for us, right? And this, this is how you know that mistakes are gonna happen. And that's down here says, this is why mistakes will happen. We like to think, like I said before, that it's a straight line. But the fact that there's no way to know if this plan will work for your body type, your hormone profile, your disease history, until you practice it, mistakes are going to happen. Mistakes being like, I fell off the plan. It didn't work. I overate. <sighs> we can let go of the self-beating that happens and the shame and the guilt and the I'm a bad person we can let go of that because there are going to be mistakes because not everything you try is going to work. But the stuff that is, is what's going to move you forward because now you have confidence in how to do it on your own. So habit number one was create a system for life and do your last diet makeover forever. All right. Habit number two. Now that you have your foundations in replace, we have taught you what to eat. Now you have to know how to eat. So no BS habit number two is you have to learn how to eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full, and the rest is just drama. So we're gonna go over what that means. But 
first, I need you to understand that there are three reasons why we eat on a daily basis, okay? Because we should eat. And should eat means, oh, I just woke up, I should eat breakfast because I've always eaten breakfast in the morning. Or it's noon, I should eat. Or this was my scheduled break at work, I should eat. Or somebody walked up to my desk and said, here's some donuts for you. Would you like a donut? And you feel like you should eat, otherwise you're gonna hurt their feelings. Should eating is not a reason to eat, okay? Just because we were brought up eating at a certain time of day our whole life doesn't mean that that is the solution that is going to get you to your goal. So we need to understand that we eat sometimes because we should eat. The next reason we eat is because we want to eat. And this is where thinking and feeling gets us in trouble. So want to eat. Things like, I had a really hard day at work. I'm not doing this healthy eating thing. I just want to eat my craft dinner. Or my boss came over to my desk today and he wasn't very nice and he dropped all this work and I'm never going to get it done and I'm really stressed out. So I'm just going to have this donut because it'll make me feel better. Or how about this? It's 8 PM at night. I'm bored and I'm watching Netflix and it feels good kind of to sit around and watch Netflix with a bowl of popcorn. Right. And I don't have to be bored. We eat because we want to eat. Emotions are driving this. See, here's the thing. Remember that skill I taught you that you have to learn, practice, and develop on how to eat to fuel your body? If you're eating because you should be eating or because you have a feeling that makes you want to eat, these are not reasons to eat. You only need to be eating because you need to eat. This is how you fuel your body. When your stomach is legitimately like, hey, I'm a little bit hungry. We should probably eat something right now. So we need to start identifying this. So I want you to type in the comments right now, how do you know your body is hungry? Like, what, how do you know you need to eat versus want and should? So I'm going to get you to type in the comments right now what's going on in your body. So for me, I start to kind of feel a hollowness, maybe a light grumble, just kind of waking up being like, oh yeah, I need to eat a little bit. Grumble, grumble. It, it's time to eat right now. So we're looking in the comments right now. I see uh, Michelle says low blood sugar. That, okay, that's an interesting one. What does that feel like? This is an interesting one. The low blood sugar comment is totally a valid thought, but what you're actually experiencing is a roller coaster of hormones because of the presence of processed and refined foods in our diet. Super interesting. Okay, I'm reading some of the other comments on here. I hear um, grumbling in my stomach. I hear, yeah, emptiness. I experience all the exact same things. So. These are the reasons we need to be eating. It's only this. If we are reading for this, this is what leads to chronic overeating because we're just eating because a clock says, because somebody else said we should, or because we want to eat. So we need to understand that. So what is getting us in trouble is our old belief systems. Belief systems, beliefs are a series of thoughts that you have that are so ingrained in who you are that you don't even question them as optional anymore. They just are the truth. What do you mean that's not true? Of course it's true. I've known this my whole life. But this, when you're creating your system, this is where you start to question, like, are any of these thoughts I'm thinking helping me? Like, where did they even come from? So here are some of my favorites. Meal frequency. I grew up, and trust me, when I was doing my personal training education, my kinesiology education, we were told verbatim that three meals a day plus three snacks must happen because otherwise your metabolism crashes, you uh, will eat everything in sight, and everything's going to fall apart, and that's it. That's what we're taught. Like You have to eat three times a day and three snacks. That's just the rule. Like These are beliefs we're taught. We're taught the belief... Um, you have to eat breakfast the second you get out of bed so that you start burning uh, calories right away in the morning. So things like that, all right? Or um, things like uh, don't eat after eight o'clock ever, ever, ever. Just things that we have never questioned. Or what about this one? Don't waste your food because there will be kids in some faraway country that are directly affected by you not finishing the food on your plate. So child, because we were, I was raised as this, instead of listening to your body and your body's going, I'm full, I don't need any more, eat it now anyways, because someone else is going to suffer if you don't overeat everything on your plate. This carries through into so many of my clients' lives, myself included. I mean, have you ever gotten halfway through a meal and been like, I'm, I'm full, but you're like, I can't waste that. That's a lot of money. I can't throw my food out. Like you don't even question. You're like, throw? 
half of my food out, even though I'm already full? What? This is actually why we're having such struggles with our weight. We are so conditioned. What about this one? If you wait too long between meals, you're gonna overeat, for sure. You're gonna eat back all the calories you missed, plus more, and then you're gonna spiral out of control and you'll have to start again on Monday. Am I right? Like, we heard this one before, what about this one? Eating food makes other people happy. So think about this. Um, and I literally had this conversation with a client the other day. She comes over, she says, oh, Somebody came up to me at the office and they made, they made cookies from home because it's, you know, it was the holidays and they had cookies from home and they said, have one, I baked them. And my client said, well, I didn't want to say no because she would feel bad. Huh? We're overeating because we think we have the power to make someone else feel bad. Newsflash, little bit of a tangent here for a second. You have no power however anyone else feels. Here's the thing. The words that are coming out of your mouth, whether you say yes to the cookies or no to the cookies, have nothing to do with how that person feels. That person has to consciously think a, or perceive what you're saying as something that they don't like. You can't choose whether or not to make them feel any way the same way as a, I right now can't make you feel any way. You'd have to think a sentence in your head that would make you feel negative, happy. If you're feeling motivated, inspired right now, it's likely because of the conversation going on in your head. So we need to stop thinking that, oh, my mom made this spaghetti that she only makes once a year and she would be heartbroken if I didn't eat it. These are old belief systems. We have to get over the idea that we are responsible for oh, how other people feel and that us eating makes people happy. No, no, no. They make themselves happy by how they think. So we need to let go of this. And I want you to, here's what I want you to think. Who's benefiting from all of this overeating? Six meals a day, uh, eat at breakfast, lunch, dinner, uh, 10.30 a.m., 11.30 a.m. I don't know what time recess was in elementary school for us, but we're probably programmed to eat at that time all the time now. Don't waste food. You'll overeat if you wait. Make others happy. Who's benefiting from this? Here's the thing. Meal frequency. Do you know where the whole three snack idea came in from? Because in the 1950s, nobody had snacks. It was unheard of. That came in when the, pro, the presence of protein supplement companies came in. If there wasn't such a thing as snacks, you would never need a protein bar or a nutritious bar or a protein shake this. It is literally since the uprising of the supplement industry that meal frequency has gone from three meals a day to six because you should always eat between your meals because you know if you, if you, you'll overeat if you don't wait. And all these ideas that our metabolism is gonna crash. You know what's making our metabolism crash? Overeating. Eating way more than we need, way more frequently than we need, and not letting our bodies use the fuel that's there. If you eat too much food too frequently, you store it on your body, and then we wonder why we're having such a problem staying lean and feeling thin. So timing of meals. How do you think the breakfast industry would stay in business if we didn't all have sugary breakfast cereals, oatmeal, all of this stuff like that. These are things you need to ask yourself. Who is benefiting from this overeating? If it's not you, you need to question whether this is something you still want to believe going forward. So then we run into our serious problem here. So we've talked about waiting till you're hungry to start eating. And I'm not talking about waiting until you're like feeling faint I'm talking about waiting until your body says, hey, can you, I need a little bit of fuel, a light grumble. You're just starting to have the sensations of needing some food. I'm not talking about waiting until you're starving. I'm talking about not eating because you should eat or you want to eat. Then we have to think about waiting until or stop eating when we're satisfied instead of like finishing our plate or eating because someone else wants us to eat, right? So here's where we run into two problems. These two things should be separate. The fuel your body needs, right? The healthy, nutritious, the vitamins, the proteins, the healthy carbs, the healthy fats, that is the fuel your body needs. Then, remember I said how you need to eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full, the rest is drama? That's your emotional life. That's the way you think and the way you feel. When you should eat because it's a belief system in your head, or you want to eat because it's an emotion, because you're bored, you're stressed out, you're angry, you're frustrated, you're feeling doubt, guilt, shame, overwhelm, all of these feelings that are so intolerable that you know, and I know if you ever overeaten before, you darn well know that if you're bored or you're stressed out, that a glass of wine or your favorite treat tends to solve that temporarily. 
So what we don't understand is that your emotional life and the fuel your body needs are completely separate, but we have them so intertwined. We eat in response to clocks and other people's needs, and we eat in response to our feelings. And we forget that the only reason we need to be eating is to fuel our body, to give ourselves the right nutrients so that we can show up and be in our relationships and enjoy our lives, right? So we need to know that these are separate. We need to untangle these so that fuel your body needs has nothing to do with the emotions you're experiencing that day. And this is how we stop ending overeating. Because when your emotions aren't involved, you don't eat because you're bored. You eat because you need food. You don't stuff yourself to full. You stop when you're satisfied because you don't need to fill that emotional void with this. So this is something so important. So then we come to our practice part of this. So we've already learned the skills, meaning you need to wait until you are experiencing the sensations of your hunger. You don't eat because other people want you to, and you stop when you're full. We need to practice these skills. We need to go out into the world. So here's a question I have for you. When was the last time you let yourself get hungry? I'm going to let that sink in for a second. Because when I work with women, we struggle on one end or the other. Half of the women I work with have a really hard time waiting until they're hungry to eat. The other half have a really hard time stopping at satisfied or full. So I want you to write in the comments right now, do you have a harder time waiting until you actually need food? Or do you have a harder time stopping when your body's like, this is good for me? I always have a harder time stopping when I'm full. And that was because I was raised with the whole idea of clean your plate, don't waste money, don't waste food. So I wanna hear here. All right, Kristen says, stopping when I'm full. Angela says, stopping. Okay, we have a, uh, oh, waiting till we're hungry. Okay, so you can see that this is, there's balance on each end of the spectrum here. And what we need to understand is, this is how we practice this skill. What does hunger feel like? And I know we already addressed that question. We have to say like, okay, what does it feel like? And now we have to be willing to have the courage to let that happen and not freak out. Because here, I'm gonna tell you a quick little story about a client that I have. I was talking to her about this and she literally could not tell me the last time she felt hunger. And I, some of you guys might be resonating with that. And I said to her, I was like, okay, let's, let's go through this together. Because if we have a fear, totally normal, Let's walk through that fear. So if I said to you right now, like, what are you so worried about letting yourself get hungry? What, is, what, is, what do you think is gonna happen? She's like, well, if I don't eat right at noon, then I have to go to a meeting and I won't be able to think because I'm gonna have this massive drop in blood sugar and then I'm gonna be walking around like a zombie and then I won't be able to perform and then I'll do a bad job and I'll get reprimanded by my boss. I was like, how's that ever happened to you? And she's like, well, no because we never actually cross that boundary and see what it's actually like. What actually happens when you wait? Same thing is if you're struggling on that end of stopping when you're full, like me, what are we so worried about happening if you don't stop when you're full? Like, let's think about that. What, are we, what do we think is gonna happen? If we hit full and we just stop, do you know what mine is? I, I'm gonna miss out, or this one, but it just tastes really good. Those are really interesting thoughts. And all that eating is doing is just satisfying a feeling. So instead of just willing to be able to have some courage and be like, let's actually find out, we just eat. So we need to address what does hunger feel like? What does satisfied feel like? To me, satisfied feels just like light. Like I could go for a brisk walk. Like I'd feel really great. Maybe do some yoga. And full to me is as far as I want to go. Full to me is like, I am satisfied. I'm going to be able to go four to five hours without my next meal. I feel great. This is what full feels like to me. So now that you're practicing these skills, you need to develop them because here's the thing. I guarantee you, no matter what end you struggle on, waiting till you're hungry or stop when you full, you're going to overshoot the first couple times. And what that looks like is you're going to eat way past full and you're going to be like, dang it, I did it again. Or, oh my gosh, I forgot. And that's going to happen. That's normal. The same couple of times is when you don't wait till you're hungry, you wait till you're almost hungry. And that is developing that skill is, am I hungry? How do I know? Am I hungry? How do I know? Am I satisfied or full? How do I know? 
We need to develop that. You need to hone in on what your version of hungry looks like, what your version of full feels like. The rest is just drama. And when I say drama, I mean the feelings and the thoughts, the I'm bored, I'm stressed out, you deserve this, just one. It's not gonna hurt. You don't have that much weight to lose. Why doesn't this work for me? I don't wanna eat that. I don't feel like this. This is drama. Take the drama out of it. Look at the facts. Eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full. All right. Now, this is the habit I know that you've likely been waiting for. No BS habit number three. How to commit to your plan. So do what you said you were going to do and process any craving, no matter how intense it is. Okay. So I really want you to understand first what a craving is. So a craving is a very, very strong desire, okay? And it gets louder the longer you resist it. So perhaps your brain is like, huh, that donut looks good. That donut looks really good. And then you just are like, no, no, I'm on this plan. I can't have that diet because I'm on this plan. I can't have the donut. And then your brain's like, yeah, but you really should. Because you know what? You worked really hard this week and you are so stressed out. You deserve that. You know, this you work so hard, this will be fine. It's just one. So your brain starts ramping up its reasoning and it starts to get more convincing. Here's the thing. Your brain is going to continue ramping up until it finds one that pushes that hot button for you where you're just like, fine, fine. But here is why the cravings work so well on you. Because you give them authority in your life. So I'm going to give you an example to make this sense. So if I said to you right now, hey, I would really like it if you went and bought me a new car. And you're like, no. And I'm like, yeah, you should buy me a new car. You need to buy me a new car. You need to buy me a new car. I'm getting louder. You need to buy me a car. What are you doing? Go right now and go get me a car. And you're looking at me going, no, because I have no authority in your life. You're just like, no, I have no. But this craving comes in. Oh, you know what would be nice? Donuts. Sounds really good. And it's a strong desire and that has authority over you because you've allowed it for so long. So it's not only a combination of your thinking that, oh, that would be nice, but now you're working on your physiology because here's the thing. When is the last time, tell me, you've craved broccoli, huh? Or how about um, some, some rice? Or how about a chicken breast, right? Like a chicken breast, how you think of a chicken breast right now, that's called a normal level of desire for food. That's normal. All of this drama about these foods that you can't stop craving, that's abnormal. And here's why. Because the chances are the food that you crave is a processed or refined food. Do you know what mine is? It's bridge mix. Because there's a little bit of surprise. It's chocolate, but you don't know if there's a jelly bean in there or a raisin or a peanut or maybe it's a mint. There's a little bit of surprise. It's got the sweetness. You can mindlessly eat them. Like that is mine. When you take whatever your food or drink is, you have concentrated and refined the properties of it. The sugar in those candies is not how they occurred in nature. They occurred as a sugarcane plant. The flour that's in those cupcakes you can't stop eating, that was a plant at one point, but then we refined it, processed it, added a bunch of garbage to it. This goes for breads, for pastas, for all of anything that is not nature made on your plate. And when you take something and concentrate it, you also concentrate the effect on your brain. So when your brain receives those bridge mix candies or those chips, it gives an exaggerated reaction of dopamine. So dopamine is a neurotransmitter in your brain. So that's a messenger. And when it connects with the receptor, you feel pleasure, like good, like, like picture biting into your favorite treat kind of pleasure. That instant body wash you get, that's dopamine. So here's the thing, if you're getting an exaggerated response to the food you're eating, which are the refined processed foods, your body starts going, this has to be important. Oh my gosh, this has to be so important because look how good this feels. We need more, we need more. You should do that again. And that's how cravings start because you give your brain that little bit of exposure to 
that good feeling. And it's an addiction. Your body craves that same reward seeking dopamine rush. And if you don't, if you don't give your body that you go through withdrawals and the longer you've been eating your food and the more of it you get, the refined processes and sugars and flours, the more intense your cravings are. So it's not just your thoughts. It's, you, it's nothing to do with your willpower. You're not weak. It's not your fault. You literally have an addiction going on in your brain. And I'm going to show you how to break that addiction. It's not about finding a substitute food or not buying the chips. It's the fact that you're addicted to it. It's the fact that your thoughts are driving you literally mad when it comes to these foods. So here's the thing. We know, okay, say your thing is chips. There's a bowl of chips sitting in front of you. The hard thing is not not eating the chips, right? It's not picking up the chips, not doing that. That's the easy part, right? We know that, like physically not eating it. It's the easy part. The hard part is when you say no and you don't pick up the chips, despite your brain screaming at you, you have to deal with all of the torrent of assault that happens in your head. Do it now. You need to do this. You feel uncomfortable. I know for me, I get really intense, like stomach tightness. I get shortness of breath. And that is so intolerable for so many women that it's just easier to eat it. So here's what I want you to understand. We only think that we have, oh, sorry. We have to understand that we must learn that in order to be successful in any plan, whether it's a plan we create together, your plan, a plan you downloaded on the internet. You have to learn how to manage these cravings ASAP because if you don't deal with this because you're riding on a motivation high from a new diet, you're going to get to week four and you're going to realize that it's not worth dealing with this garbage anymore. So you're going to quit your goal. The second you start your next last diet makeover ever, you need to get this under control day one. Because if you can get this under control on day one, do you know how much easier your life is going to be when that short-term burst of motivation at the beginning wears off? You actually have a skill in place. Because I'm going to tell you a secret here because I'm all about transparency. And now what I find the diet industry doesn't tell us is when you decide to move toward the whole food diet and you take out those refined and processed foods, you know what happens? You go through withdrawal and you get more intense cravings and it gets harder before it gets easier, but we're never told that. So we think there's something wrong with us when we find it so hard. And then on top of that, we don't even know how long this lasts. Is this permanent that I'm going to feel this miserable? No. Cravings take about one to two weeks to extinguish themselves, but you have to be willing to go through that little bit of a speed bump. Remember how I said it's not a straight line to success? We have to be ready for this, but if you can master this skill at the beginning, it is smooth sailing from here on out. So I'm gonna teach you how to do that, but I want you to understand first what happens in your body when you have a craving, all right? So you take out my bridge mix. So you take out my bridge mix, and I, my body's not getting that rush of endorphins, that dopamine, from all the pleasure from that food, okay? So what happens? My brain, freaks out. What do you mean we're not getting that anymore? Are you crazy? Do you know how good that feels? There's something wrong. That was important. Don't you know how good that made us feel? So what does your brain start doing? It freaks out and it starts sending you mass cravings. Like you're, all you can think about is that food. It seems like it's pulled from within you like a compulsion. You feel like you have no willpower. You don't even know what's going on. P.S. This is normal, okay? We need to stop thinking that this is abnormal. We have eaten so much junk for such a long time that we don't understand that we need to break an addiction. And this is normal to have this response. But what we usually do is we throw our hands up in the air and say, this is terrible. I can't possibly live like this for the rest of my life. But we don't even know that it's a temporary process. So here's what happens. We get these really big cravings, right? Where we all we want to do is eat because we remove the food. We think we have two options. This is my interpretation of willpower. Notice how miserable this looks. It is like, I want you to picture resisting something. It is like holding a steering wheel, driving on ice, and your knuckles are white, and it's tense, and it feels just like absolutely miserable. So I heard an amazing analogy for this. I want you to picture a beach ball. And I want you to picture yourself at the lake, and you take that beach ball and you push it underwater. And you know that that beach ball is dying to get up. You holding that beach ball down is willpower. 
eventually what's going to happen, that ball is going to fly out of the water and that's going to be you giving in because willpower is a very limited resource. And not only that, when you're using willpower, you know that it feels miserable. It feels awful to fight, feel it, fight a craving all the time. Like always be on defense. It's absolutely miserable. And this is the problem. We think we have two options. Use willpower and put the chips in the other room or just eat them. These are our options. And no wonder why we're miserable. No wonder we fail so often. I mean, can I get a yes? Do you know what I'm talking about here? We've always thought that we must resist through willpower or eat them, that there's no other option. Yes, is that, do I, do I get a heck yes for that? So here's the new habit I'm gonna teach you. The new habit is just listening to the craving happen and not responding. So you might be thinking, well, how's this different from this? Because this is a fight. You're trying to distract yourself and put things out of your eyesight or just eat something else, or do something else, or listen to something else. That is what this is. The new habit I want you to understand is that you can experience a craving and not respond to it. Here's what that looks like. I really want bridge mix right now. I really want bridge mix right now. Oh my gosh, you really deserve that. And you start getting the tightening. For me, it's shortness of breath, and I just feel a little bit antsy, because I'm saying no to myself. But here is the opportunity I'm gonna to present to you. What happens if you just allowed yourself to be uncomfortable? What is so intolerable about being uncomfortable? I love asking this question to my female clients because I find that we don't know that being uncomfortable and just letting them pass is an option. Our only options are to fight them continuously and say no and resist and restrict ourselves and choose to think, I can't have that. I am restrictive. This is a diet. What if instead we're just saying like, I choose, I choose to eat these foods because they're good for me. And if I have to sit here for 10 minutes right now, and feel uncomfortable to let this pass, so be it. And I can remember the very first time I let this happen. It was a hot chocolate craving. And it, was, um, it was a cooler night and I remember I was sitting there and I got this like brilliant inspiration to have a hot chocolate. And I was like, oh gosh, that'd be good. And I'm like, nope, nope, nope. This is where I'm gonna start this. This ends today. I am never gonna struggle with this again. This is the first of so many opportunities as I get to practice. So I sat there I knew my breath felt awful and I knew my stomach felt yucky and all I wanted to do was just make that stop. I didn't want to have to sit through this. Why should I have to sit through this? I just decided, okay, let's sit through this. And I just sat there on the couch and I remember just letting it be there and when it was ready to leave, it could. And guess what? It only took about 11 minutes because I looked at the clock, you bet I did. 11 minutes later, that craving had passed and I was like, oh my gosh, how cool is this? I feel normal again and I didn't eat that and I did what I said I was going to do. Now there is a little rush of dopamine that I want you to chase. That, that dopamine rush that has no negative consequence after because you darn well know by giving into that craving, there's a negative consequence after and that's the weight gain, the bloat, the disappointment. So I was able to just listen to that craving happen, listen to it in my ears, feel it in my body, listen to my thoughts, and just be okay with feeling uncomfortable. We have to ask ourselves, like, why are we so scared to feel uncomfortable? Like, what is so unbearable that we're willing to overeat, ruin all of our forward progress, feel terrible about ourselves? So this is what I want you to start thinking about. Your new habit is not to resist, not to give in, but just to listen to it happen, be okay with it, let that discomfort come in and let it pass as when we may. So here's where the practice comes in. And this is that whole hot chocolate example I gave you. It's called conditioning. So I'm gonna give you an example so that you're gonna remember this for the rest of your life. This experiment was done by a scientist named Pavlov. So this is called the Pavlovian dog experiment. And I'm gonna give it to you really simplified because it'll really help you understand. So right now, you are conditioned to go after your cravings because of the pleasure you feel, right? So this is how this is gonna relate. This is how the experiment was done. There's a dog, and what they started doing was they would ring this little bell, and then they would give the dog food. 
and they'd ring the bell and they gave the dog food and they rang the bell. You get the point, right? They kept doing this. What they started noticing after so many times of going through this pattern that they would ring the bell and the dog would start salivating. So the purpose of salivating is to fill the mouth with enzymes to help you digest the food that's coming in, okay? So you'd ring the bell and the food hadn't even been presented yet and the dog had associated hearing the bell that he knew the food was coming next because this is always what's happened. He was conditioned to understand that when a bell rang, food came. So he would start pre-salivating despite no food being there. And so they're like, this dog produces saliva to a bell. It has nothing to do with the food because it's conditioned. Here's how this relates to you. This bell is your cravings. You need these chips. Have this glass of wine. That donut looks good. So you respond by eating it and your reward is that dopamine rush you get that. It's neurotransmitters that are like, yes, this is important. This is exciting. We like this. You get a craving. You eat, your brain gets rewarded with feel-good chemicals. You are conditioned to respond to your cravings. It's not your fault. It's not your willpower. There's nothing wrong with you. This is what's going on inside your body, okay? You are conditioned. Now, once they condition the dog to salivate just because of the bell, they're like, I wonder if we can decondition this dog. So here's what they did. They rang the bell. The dog would drool and salivate but they didn't give the food. They rang the bell, drool, no food. They did that enough times. What they stopped noticing was when they rang the bell, the dog stopped drooling because the dog had now reprogrammed himself to understand that there's no food coming, so why produce all this saliva? This is where your opportunity comes in. If this bell is your craving and you wanna stop the cravings from having power over you, you have to decondition yourself. So what this looks like is when the craving happens, when that bell rings, instead of responding to it, you need to break that cycle and stop responding to it. You need to let that craving happen without answering it. And you need to let that happen enough times that your brain stops respecting a reward. When your brain says, Oh, when I, when, I make, when I make a craving happen, I don't get that anymore. Guess what happens? The cravings extinguish themselves. The cravings stop happening. And it is literally that simple. Here's where we go wrong. Just this one. One time. I know all week I've been allowing cravings and I rock and this is great, but it's the weekend. So I'm just going to give in to my cravings for one day. I'm gonna have a, just a spur of the moment cheat day. Bang, we're back into it. Maybe not if we do it once that day, but you, how many times, you guys, if you have like something in your day that's out of plan, and, but instead of getting right back on plan, you just like, whoop, guess the whole day is blown, should probably just stop all this all together and start again on Monday. And we let that whole weekend build this cycle again. So your brain knows when it gives you a craving, you eat, it feels good. You need to break that cycle. You need to decondition yourself long enough. So what that looks like for you, when the craving happens, when the bell's ringing, you need to consistently, Allow that craving to happen without responding to it. And you need to do it consistently enough times to extinguish this pattern. Like I said, on average, I find between it takes between five and 10 days. But if you interrupt that pattern, you may have to start again. So are you willing to go through five, seven, even 10 days of discomfort to not be at the mercy of that little bell anymore? And I want you to give me an answer. Do you say, we say yes to that? Like, what is so bad about five to seven days of allowing a craving without eating to get rid of this for the rest of your life? Because do you know how much easier it is to get to your goal weight when this is not an issue for you anymore? So true. So we need to understand we got to let that bell ring. That's the goal here. So it's our coming up on our final thing here. We need to understand we learned. We learned what a craving is. We learned what happens when you take out any food. We practice the skill of listening to that craving happen without responding. We now develop it. And by developing it, we need to understand what gives cravings their power. It's the fact that we're conditioned to give in to them. 
because the brain knows exactly the right buttons to push and the things to tell you to make you eat. Impulsiveness. Impulsiveness. This is huge. Like cravings don't just like have a, like, you know what, on, on Tuesday at noon, we're going to have a craving. They come out of nowhere and it's their urgency that makes them so important, right? And that dopamine reward, your brain will say anything to you to get that rush of dopamine. That's its job. We have to remember that part of our brain is functioning primitive brains. So we need to understand that we need to plan for it. We need to understand that <sighs> on my way home from work tomorrow, there's a very good chance that I'm going to have a craving for McDonald's as I drive past it. I just need to listen to it happen, allow it to be there and keep driving because it will pass. This is what allows us to have chips and cakes and treats in the house. This is what allows us to live in a household where people eat different foods than we eat because our goals aren't the same and that'd be totally okay. We don't need to get all worked up when the boyfriend or the husband brings home chips and well, he brought home chips and, I, and now I'm fully off plan. We, that can be okay. Like imagine a life where that's possible. So this is what I want you to understand here is so important. So what I want to do is I want to come back and have a brief conversation with you guys. I'm just going to pull up my slides really quick. You guys hold with me for just a sec. Let's share this screen. All right. So I want to hear with you guys right now. I'm just going to open up my chat box here. All right. So I want to hear from you guys. Like, what do you think about this? Do you think that this could be something that's impactful in your life? And I'm just going to pull up my chat. All right. Oh, Michelle saying my hubby baked cookies yesterday, totally binged, right? And now you have new skills to go into this with. So I want to know like what you guys think about all of the skills that I have taught you inside today's class. Let's just see here. I'm looking at comments here. This sounds like it works. This is so refreshing. Thanks for the skills. Yeah, you bet. So I want to address something before you come up here today. And I want you to understand how powerful this might be for your health. So I don't know exactly why you showed up today. Perhaps it's because you want to create a sustainable plan that has you seeing results. I mean, that's me. I'm ready to have a lifestyle that I stick with. Or maybe you're not interested in battling the food cravings and going a whole week with doing well and then falling off the wagon. And maybe you're just ready to feel confident and sexy again. I mean, that's what I want. I just want to feel amazing. Or what about if you're just ready to start a system that teaches you how to commit no matter what? Because you know what? Now it's your turn. And I've shown you, this is the system that takes you from where you are now and helps you create a healthy lifestyle you love that has you dropping your last 10 pounds. And do you notice that I did that without, uh, without counting a single calorie? So I got to ask, do you want to know how to kick your cravings and start your last diet makeover ever? I want to hear from you guys in the comments. Like, are you guys ready? And I, if you guys are like, this is exactly what I've been needing to hear. No wonder everything hasn't worked. This is that opportunity I'm going to give you. If you want to take this further with me, I'd love to tell you about my last diet makeover ever program. It is a cutting edge six week science based makeover program for women just like me and just like you who wanna find a sustainable, healthy lifestyle they love and feel confident in their skinny jeans. And I mean, without counting a single calorie. So this program that I've developed based on these exact strategies gives you like literally step by step by step for how to kick cravings and become a fat burning machine. And it's simple. I want you to be able to stick to this for life. So one of the women that went through my program, I loved hearing her story, you guys. She just says that like, she feels so much better about herself and she didn't quite know exactly what to do before but since joining the program she dropped nine pounds in six weeks like what can you imagine if by by mid-february you were already down nine pounds and the thing that i love that she says is it allows it the changes to happen gradually it was never overwhelming and everything seems to come at the right time so if this is something where you're like, I'm interested, I would love to share with you what my six phase system looks like to help you drop your last 10 pounds. So stage one is all about fresh start. This is where we talk about whole food nutrition, beginning to understand what foods are good for our body, what foods are not. I teach you how to portion size and I give you my recipe board with over 130, I call them Tanessa approved recipes on them. I also teach you how to do that decisions ahead of time. I teach you how to do your 24 hour plan here. When we're done that, we move on to intermittent fasting. So now before you let your brain freak out about the intermittent fasting, all it does is it lets your body rest and digest 
and eat. So instead of eating from 7 a.m. because we were always told we need breakfast all the way until 9 p.m. at night, we take that same amount of food and we condense it into anywhere between an eight and 10 hour window. So what this does is this allows the hormone insulin, so remember we brought that one up, it allows it to rest. And that hormone, when it's at rest, means we can access the fat we have stored on our bodies as energy because that's how you lose body fat. You have to take it out of the storage, break it down, and then use it as energy. But if you're constantly eating all day long, constantly stimulating the hormone insulin, you're gonna have a heck of a time beating all of those crazy hormones that are happening. So I teach you how to do that with intermittent fasting here. Then what we do in stage three is we go into building a winning mindset. So I told you that diet mistakes happen. I told you that everything that you practice, some things aren't gonna work and some things are. So what we talk about in this stage is looking at the mistakes we make and then being able to say, okay, from this mistake or from this process, what did I learn? What am I gonna take with me? What have I made it mean about myself? So this is so important alone in helping you commit to your plan. It helps you stay focused so that you're not flailing all over the place. Stage four is about intuitive eating. This is where I teach you about eating when you're hungry, stopping when you're full, but I teach it by a, a, a scale called the hunger scale. So it makes it really actionable with exactly what to watch for at each end of the hunger scale. Stage number five is cycling your diet and joy eating. So I am never a fan of saying you can't ever have pasta again, or you can't ever, that's not realistic. If we're gonna be doing this together until we're 85 or 90 years old, we need to be eating foods that we enjoy sometimes. But the way I teach it to you is a process called joy eating. So I allow you to include those foods back into your plan, but the system, the strategy that I use to put those foods back in is strategic in a way that does not set off your craving cycle. Oh my gosh, that is important because we think we'll have a cheat day and then we wonder why we fall off the wagon for three days. It's because the system that I teach is not in place on how not to get cravings again, but still enjoy the foods that you call joy eat. Last stage six is all about reboot. We finish up with exercise and self-love. And this is all about learning how to enjoy the exercise you're doing with a formula I teach called the minimum baseline. So there's so much to offer inside this program. We start with the complete diet makeover program. That includes everything from your lesson board to our community, to the meal planning system with over 130 Tanessa approved recipes that are ready to go. I also give you weekly lessons, checklists, workbooks to take you step by step through the program so that you know you're doing the right stuff in the right order. And there's tons of support too. So we have a, a group called the Inner Circle Community. And basically what it is, is we all gather there to support each other. We have a hashtag system so that we can, you know, get encouragement, we can share our wins, but most importantly, you're able to see the experiences of the other women going through the program. And lastly, coaching. So I answer every single question inside the Facebook group. I also jump on live and do a quick workshop at least once a week to make sure that you're staying motivated and you have the chance to make sure all of your questions are answered. And I think one of the best parts about this program is the inner circle community. And it's for members only, it's private, our posts are all kept uh, away from the public eye so you can always be honest with us and share your struggles so we can cheer you on and offer you solutions. One of our members, Melissa, said that having this community group and being able to share and read others' experiences and their struggles and their wins, it helped hold her accountable. And it was nice to know she wasn't going through it alone because we're going to find those days where those in those first couple of weeks where it's going to be a little more challenging. And the fact that you have a community to prop you up is, is a really cool thing. So as part of this January release of the Last Diet Makeover Ever program, I have some special bonuses that I wanted to offer you that I've never offered before. So bonus number one is this January, we're doing something called the January Virtual Fit Gym. I don't know about you, but January is a really refresh time for me. Uh, it's the start of a new year. We might want to put some new exercise habits into place. So we're doing a virtual gym. That means we meet up. You tell me what workouts we're all doing during the week. I tell you mine. We post stories together. We share the workouts we're doing. It's literally like we're all hanging out in the gym together, keeping each other accountable on our workouts. I'm going to offer challenges. I'm going to give you sample workouts, so all kinds of things that'll keep you super excited going through your January virtual fit gym. And then this is really special. So this is called the fast action bonus. So if you choose to join all of the women inside the last diet makeover ever program by tonight at 11:59 PM Pacific standard time, 
I'm going to give you a 30 minute free coaching call with me. So what this does is it allows me and you to sit face to face just on video like this. And it lets me help you personalize this program. We sit down and say, where are you struggling? Where are you getting stuck the most? How can I help you make this even more better? Where can we set up solutions that are specific to you? But this bonus, bonus number two, I'm only offering until tonight at 11.59 p.m. So if you enroll, this is yours. We can set it up. And it's a coaching call to me, which is normally a $97 value, and it's completely free when you enroll in the program. And this program, I mean, it has a lot of success. Like even right off the bat, two weeks in, you can see Nicole here. She lost three inches off of her abdomen. Like picture this. Picture two weeks from now having three inches off your abdomen. Or what about Navneet here? She says she's way less bloated than ever before, and she's down 7.8 pounds only after two weeks. And Jenna says she's down six pounds since day one. The results are real and you have the community support and we make it fun. So I wanna know, are you ready to learn how to create a lifestyle you love, feel confident in your skinny jeans and drop your last 10 pounds? Well, I really hope so, but you've gotta probably be asking me right now, like, okay, Tanessa, like, talk to me about the money, what's the investment? And I wanna tell you, if I took all of those components alone, if I took the workshops and if I took the community and I took the program and I took the coaching and the coaching calls and I added those all up and sold them all to you individually, the program cost would be 887. And this doesn't even include the fast action bonus. But I want, before I, before I tell you what I'm actually going to offer it to you for, I want you to imagine something for me. I want you to ask yourself if all this program did for you was just give you the body of your dreams that you were able to maintain effortlessly, I mean, would it be worth it? If all this program did for you was help you stop your food cravings because you were eating the right foods, in the right amounts at the right times, would it be worth it? And what about if all this program did for you was show you how to commit to your plan long-term, stop overeating, and fit into your favorite jeans. I mean, so you could just wear what you want to wear, feel good, would it be worth it? So, and I think, you know, this is the part nobody's teaching. Everyone teaches you, here's my cookie cutter plan. It should work for you because it worked for me. Here's my exercise plan, should work for you, should work because it worked for me. But nobody's teaching you the stuff about dealing with that discomfort. Because what gets you there keeps you there. So if you don't learn the skills that get you there and keep you there, what's the point? I am of a huge thinking that the weight loss industry is 50% what you eat and how you exercise and 50% how you manage your thinking. I don't see this being taught anywhere. All I see is diets being given and just generic advice about grams of protein you should eat with no regard for how it affects your body. And you know, this, if, if, if it was just about what you ate, we'd be at our ideal weight because we intuitively know broccoli's healthy, pizza is not as healthy. But we know it's more than that and we're searching for it. And this has worked so well for my clients because these are the skills that I teach them to make it work. So I got to ask right now, is this you? Are you looking for the solution to how to wake up in the body you know you want to be in to stop struggling with the cravings and wondering why nothing ever works for you? My program only opens a couple times a year and January is going to be an exciting one because we got the virtual fit gym. There's so much happening inside the program. January is an amazing time to start. And like Kamiko says here, she's so much happier seeing these kind of results. Kamiko lost 10 pounds in six weeks. She just sent me an email a couple of weeks ago saying, I'm at my goal weight, which is super exciting for her. She gets to eat without counting calories, which is awesome. And she only eats when she's hungrier, which is even more awesome. So I'm going to do a quick recap of what you get. You get the six phase diet makeover system with the lessons, the workbook, the success checklist, and that on its own has a value of 297. When you pair it with the accountability check-ins, the challenges, inner circle Facebook community, that's another $97. Live weekly group coaching calls with me and that Q&A, meaning I'm in the group, talking to you as much as you need, answering every question you have, that's $197 value. The bonus of that virtual fit gym, that's $199 value. And if you join us before midnight tonight, that fast action bonus alone is worth another 97 value. So if you put all of this together, it's an $887 value, but you know I'm not gonna give it to you for that because I want you to succeed. So I'm gonna bundle it all together for this January cycle and offer it to you now for 199. You can do that by jumping right over to tanessashears.com 
forward slash join. And of course, if you have lots of questions, you're more than welcome to ask them here. I'm going to open up for question and answers in a couple seconds, or you can shoot me an email at the address on the screen here. But here's what's going to happen. If you go over to tanessashears.com slash join right now, you're going to find a big red button at the top that says register for January. So when you click on that, you're going to be redirected to a PayPal page just like this. So all you're going to do is enter your information into PayPal and you're instantly going to be get taken to a thank you page. Then I'm, once I receive all the information, I'm going to fire you over our welcome email, a personalized welcome email from me saying, Hey, you're in welcome. Here's what to expect over the next couple of days. So make sure to check your inbox and like, I get where you're probably at right now. Buying an online program can be scary. Perhaps you don't know me yet. Perhaps you like what I'm saying, but you've been on 100 programs that haven't worked before. I totally understand that. I have spent so much money on programs online, and I know the apprehension that comes from making a decision like this. So what I did was I went in my community and I said, hey, what do you want women to know that are considering joining? And Sarah said, you know, it actually made my goals feel possible and sustainable and it was worth every penny. Melissa said, it's an accountability system of lessons that you can follow for the rest of your life and not just the six weeks only. And she's gotten her confidence back, beaten her plateau, and she now knows she can continue on until she's 80. And we know that that's one of my mottos, that you have to be able to do it until you're 80, otherwise you're going to go right back to where you started. Uh, Miko says, this will change your life and how you look at food, to know that I actually planned all my meals by myself and see results is amazing. So I'm going to review what you get. You get that six phase complete diet makeover program, all the lessons, audio lessons, worksheets, checklists, success paths, $297 value, accountability check-ins, challenges, and that inner circle Facebook community is a $97 value. Live weekly group coaching calls with me, and I'm in there answering all your questions for $197. You got the January virtual fit gym for $199. And if you enroll by tonight, you get that 30 minute fast action bonus. So that total value is 887, but it's just for 199 for you because you showed up today on the webinar. But I want to share something with you. If you're like, I don't know, is this something I want to spend more money on? I want you to think about this. If the only change you made in this program was you stopped going out for lunch every day this week, this program would more than pay for itself in the first month. If all it changed was you stopping getting the fancy Starbucks drink in the morning and swapping it out for a healthier option, this program would pay for itself. And that's the thing is when you start thinking of it like that, like what changes could I make? What if I taught you a meal planning system that cuts your grocery bill by 50%? Then you have these skills for life that go so far beyond this. So if this is what you're interested in, I would love you to go to tanessashears.com forward slash join. And if you have questions, I'd love you to email that. So, I mean, if you're saying to yourself at this point, I don't have a system for planning my meals. I don't have, like, I don't know how to kick my food cravings. Or if it's, I can't do a stick to a plan for more in a couple of weeks, or if I really want to lose my last 10 pounds, then I got to tell you, you're in the right place. This is the kickstart you need. And I would be so honored as your coach to walk this journey with you. And as you've seen, I'm completely transparent. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be roses, but I, what I will tell you is I'm going to be right there beside you the whole way, supporting you and making sure that you get all the help you need to create the plan that works for you. It, the system has worked for so many women. That's why I'm so confident in sitting here and being like, it'll work. You, you show up, you meet me halfway, you do the work, and your life is going to change. And I'm so excited to share that with you. So you can just head to tanessashears.com slash join. Now, if you've been sticking around to the end because you wanted that bonus, don't think I've forgotten because I haven't. So if you want that, how to commit to any plan, no matter what training, all you have to do is go to the link on the screen. It's tanessashears.com forward slash bonus class. Now that's a secret link. That's just between me and you. Okay. So basically what you're going to get on that page is it's going to be the 25 minute workshop and the worksheet that goes along with it. This is stellar information here and it was done inside of one of my paid classes. So make sure you head to that link, write it down right now so that you can, um, you can make sure that you have make time to go over there and include that in your new year's plans. But what I'd like to do now is open up the floor for Q and a because this doesn't have to be about the program too. It can be, if you have questions that are to do with the cravings or how about small changes or what about eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full or just about the program in general. So I'm going to give you a moment to start dropping them in the 
question and answer box. I can opening that up right now. All right, so I'm looking at the first question that's coming in here. Um, how much time is it gonna take to do the lessons each week? That's a great question. So the lessons themselves, there's about, depending on the phase, there's anywhere between 20 and 35 minutes of audio trainings. But here's what I love about audio trainings. You can listen to them in the car, while you're brushing your teeth, while you're showering, while you're putting on your makeup, while you're cleaning the house. So you can get that done while you're multitasking, which really helps. But as far as like the worksheets and the planning goes, it might take you between one and one and a half hours per week. But I want you to think about something. You're already spending time meal planning and grocery shopping. So it's not like this time is brand new time you have to find. You're simply taking what you're already doing and making it more efficient. So if you can, between seven days, find an extra hour to hour 15, I think you'd have plenty of time for success. And it doesn't have to be all at once. You can find 15 minutes a night. So that's a good place to start. Um, looking at next questions, um, let's see. What foods do I have to give up? That's a good question. So what I actually do is I give you a list of foods that are inflammatory foods. So foods that cause your body to um, have an exaggerated hormone insulin response, meaning we store fat. And I also give you a list of foods that promote a healthy gut. I teach you about something, and I don't want to get into too much detail because it gets me really excited, but there's something called leaky gut. And essentially when you eat foods that make your body mad, they leak into your blood system and cause an immune response. And if you don't know what those are, you could be eating healthy foods, but never ever actually seeing any weight loss. Weight loss resistance is largely due to that. So I teach you how to identify what foods are causing inflammation in your body and that's super important. So in terms of what foods you have to give up, that's up to you. I mean, if you know a food is upsetting your body, it's worth taking a look. Like one of the first ones for me that I gave up was the pasta. And that's why I use that example because I just knew I always felt bloated and heavy. Do you know, you know, one of the most amazing things about this program is you don't realize how good you're supposed to be feeling. You have no idea how good your body is meant to feel until you can start removing the stuff that's making you sluggish and slowing you down. So you don't have to take out all your favorites. Just start with one, small changes. And I give you a list of the ones that are usually the biggest offenders so you know where to start. Um, looking for another question. Um, what if I have a work obligation or I have to travel for the first week of the program? So this is a great question. This happens. I, I, I have women travel all the time in this program. So here's the thing. The stages are all set up so that you can do them at your own pace. Like I'm not sitting here going, why didn't you do all of week one? It's week two. You take it at your own pace. This program is set up in cycles. So what that means is I have had women that have joined me for every cycle since the beginning, and I've got women that have only done one cycle. So you can do stage one, which is all fresh start, whole foods, and stage two, which is the intermittent fasting. And if you're finding amazing success with that, you take that and you perfect it before you move on. But for some women, they wanna go all the way through the program. So you, you can go at your own pace. And how this relates to travel, meaning that we're all gonna be different places at the programs. But the thing is, we're all working towards the same goals of healthy habits. So you have access to all of these lessons for eight weeks. So meaning if the program, our time together is six weeks, I give you an extra two weeks to catch up and don't forget, like all the worksheets and everything like that, they're all downloadable. So you can download them to your computer. You can keep them for your life. That's totally fine. Um, but if you feel like, oh, I'm missing a week because I'm traveling, that's good because you have extra time to catch up. And on top of that, I like the idea of traveling because it lets you practice your skills on the go. If you're somebody who work travels all the time, this is something you need to be practicing while you're work traveling. And what a better opportunity to do this than when you're in the community. Um, all right. Um, Let's see, I'm following a mostly vegan and plant-based diet. Will this work for me? Yes, yes. So what you'll notice is I'm not telling you don't eat this, eat this, don't eat this. I'm telling you whole foods, let's move towards them. I have had two vegetarians and one vegan go through the program just in the last cycle alone. And I, they've had great success. One of them was Nicole that we saw in her, her little testimonial. She was the one who actually dropped three inches off of her waist in two weeks and she was vegan. So the thing is you incorporate the foods that make you feel good. It doesn't have anything to do with whether you eat meat, whether you don't eat meat, whether any other food comes into it. So you can take any dietary style you like and apply this because it's all about that figuring out, am I getting results? Do I feel good? Um, I'm nervous about intermittent fasting. How does it work? Hey, that's a really good question. Okay. So with the intermittent fasting, I, 
I always get this question in my inbox. I get the question. It's like, what do you mean? I can't eat. What if I, what if I, I, I have a blood sugar drop? I used to think that too. And I love when women go through their first time trying it and they're like, oh my gosh, I've never felt so good. I don't have to eat every two hours and I feel amazing. And the reason we make intermittent fasting so easy is because of what happens in the stage before. In the stage before, we do something called getting fat adapted. We teach your body, instead of using the sugar that you're feeding it all the time, and the, like from the, all the carbohydrates and all the refined and processed foods, we teach you how to burn body fat as fuel. That is a nice, slow, sustained energy source, and we get what's called fat adapted. That makes intermittent fasting a breeze. And then on top of that, here's the thing. I'm giving you six stages of what has been a really easy journey to follow, but you don't have to do every stage. If you're just, there are certain people that shouldn't even do intermittent fasting. There's a whole lesson on, is it right for you? Do you need to do this short of an eating window? Maybe you can just do a 12 hour eating window. I teach you step by step on how to try it, see if it works for you, play with different aspects of it. But like I said, none of these are mandatory. You can have 100% success without intermittent fasting. I've seen it in a good number of women. So don't feel like just because we're teaching it that you're stuck trying it. You can test it out and if it doesn't like it, you're not getting your results and it doesn't feel good, we move on to the next strategy. So really good to see there. Um, just looking at the last couple questions here, let's see. Um, will I be able to answer questions if I get stuck? Mm -hmm. So I semi live in our Facebook inner circle community and I love the community. Um, I always let you know what I'm doing during the week and anytime a question pops up, I make it my goal to get back to you at least within 24 hours to make sure you have an answer to your question. Um, except for maybe Saturdays because we all need a day off. But um, I don't like, here's what I do. I don't want you to finish the six weeks or eight weeks and I don't want you to go off and feel confused. So what I do is the way that I answer your questions, I get you thinking critically. So if you say to me something like, Tanessa, is oatmeal okay to eat? I will always come back with the answer of, so here's the science, here's the yes, here's the no, I want you to try it for three days and record how your body feels and come back to me. And then we're going to discuss that and see if it works for you. So what I like to teach you guys to do is, yes, I'll give you an answer, but I'm also going to get you to think critically so that when you are running these skills on your own, you're just like, I got this. I know how to do this. I know the answers to these questions because I can look into my body and figure them out. You got to know what to look for. Like, do you know that interrupted sleep patterns in the night is a sign of inflammation from something you're eating? I mean, if you didn't know that, you wouldn't even know where to look. So I ask you, how's your sleep? How's your water? What are you feeling like? We talk about bathroom habits. We need to get personal and start understanding what's going on in your body so we stop feeling so bloated all the time. And I always just think that we're really, we really underestimate how good we feel. Um, last question coming in here before we jump off. I see, unless anybody wants to pop one more question in. Um, how do you know you aren't overeating if you aren't counting calories? Oh, that's a good question. I get that one all the time. Here's the thing. If you compare craft dinner to, a, I'm just gonna use a salad. It's a very stereotypical healthy thing. If you have a massive salad, the micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, and the health of that salad and the calories is gonna be way lower than that of your pizza or your macaroni and cheese, okay? So we know that when we move towards a whole food nutrition plan, that we're not gonna be overeating on the calories because we're making food, we're choosing foods that supply our body with what it needs and it also regulates our hormones. So we know that we're focusing on that skill of eating for fuel at the same time as focusing on the skill of losing weight or dropping 10 pounds or fitting into a dress or whatever like that. The second thing we do is I teach you a portion sizing system, which is super fancy. Um, I teach you how to use your hands to estimate portion sizes so that you know you're not overeating. And then the third thing we do is the hunger scale. So I give you a chart that you have to fill out that shows if you're eating, if you're waiting till you're satisfied, how to assess all that. So in combination with whole foods, a bit of that intermittent fasting, the portion sizing system I give you um, that has nothing to do with measuring cups or my fitness pal or any other calorie counting app. And we join that up with um, 
the, uh, what did I just say? We have the, the hand size portion, guys. But uh, if when we put that all together, that is how, oh, the hunger scale, that's what it was. Then that's how you know that you're not overeating. You know what your body needs. You're eating for fuel when your body needs it, not because it's an emotional decision. That is how you end struggle with weight. And that is how you end emotional eating. So I don't see any other questions popping on here. So um, if you guys want that fast, if you want that one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me, you have until 11.59 p.m. tonight, just go to the link there. You can email me, reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram, wherever it is. You guys, I honor your time here this morning. I appreciate you being here. I know that taking time out of your day is important. So thank you. I appreciate you being here. And I want to hear how you take action on these skills. You guys have an absolutely fantastic rest of your, what is today? Oh, I have a fantastic rest of your week and we'll be in touch. You guys take care. Bye.